Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Twan, and I'm back from my vacation. If you guys didn't know, it was a great vacation. I actually ate 4,000 calories today, which I really do need to work it off. I'm trying to lose some weight here. But anyways, let's get right into the predictions. Uh, so... Tomorrow will be ESL 1 Cologne 2016. This will be the second major of this year. No, second? Yeah, second major of this first. No, second major. My bad. Second major of this year. Uh, previously, we did see Luminosity win this major. And uh, now which they're now SK Gaming, which is quite interesting. But there are a lot of great teams that have the potential to win this major. Teams like Fnatic, VP, Nip. Stralis, all capable of taking this major. So let's get right onto the predictions. Uh, first match of the day is at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. It will be Astralis versus Dignitas. This is actually your classic Danish team matchup. This is the number one Danish team versus the number two Danish team. Now, as of recent, we've seen Astralis really struggle, especially in the ECS LAN. We saw them. Uh, let me just show you guys these results. They kind of lost to some really shady teams. They lost to Cloud9 2-0. They lost to TSM 16-12. They lost to Nip in a close manner in Dreamhack 2. This was a semi-final, so this was expected. They did beat SK Gaming. This was not the SK. That was Luminosity. This is the XSK Gaming with a... Uh, Ocillion, Freeze, those players, and they, uh, uh, this, who cares about this result? So yeah, recent results have not been shining light on Astralis. They have really been struggling to uh, find their form ever since they got Kirby on the lineup, but I'm sure they have some strats planned for the Major, and I'm excited to see them, and we have Dignitas now. Oh, let me just get to their page. We see recent results. They did pretty good against FaZe and Ely, taking them to three maps. Ely beating TSM, beating TSM. Not too great results. TSM was not very great in those games. And these score lines are pretty misleading. As you can see, a 13 2 half from Dignitas. Do you guys. Okay, if you guys hear fireworks in the background, that's like. It's the 4th of July, so expect that shit, dude. It's like. I hope it's not too loud on the microphone. And they did lose 16-6, 16-9 to Fnatic, very expected. So nothing great from Dignitas, but nothing great from Astralis either. Which means, uh, I put my odds at around 69-31. And if uh, Dignitas stay at this odds, I'll put a small bet on them. But I would recommend if you have like a small or medium-sized inventory, do not bet on Dignitas or Astralis because this... this match will most likely end up in favor of Stralis because we can see through these head-to-heads generally Astralis does win about 80 to 90 percent of the head-to-heads here which is a lot of percentages so yeah just skip this game if you have a small inventory next we have Gambit versus CLG this is actually a I like this matchup this is actually a rematch from the MLG major uh, we saw who was I think we saw CLG make it out of groups unlike Gambit who didn't but this time CLG are if you would say I would say handicapped because they have a new player they have Kusta in place of JDM and unfortunately they still have their coach Pito standing in for them I'm not sure if he'll be a permanent player if he's coming back to the pro scene or what but he's just like He's holding CLG back. I think CLG have a lot of potential, but having Pita as a player, just like most games, he bottom frags. You have those occasional good games, like he did. Uh, let me just uh, get to CLG's team page on CS:GO Nuts. As you can see, like in E League, uh, that was the performance where Pita actually shined a bit, especially on the <laughs> overpass map against. Uh, who was it? I think I think it was the overpass map against SK where he did that piss around lurk and it looked really nice. But he doesn't have those games often and often on CT side his holds are just garbage and CLG just lose a sight immediate, immediately because of his lack of skill and lack of experience in the top tier level of CS. 
So I could really see CLG struggling. And Kusta arguably is an... I would say Kusta is a good match for CLG just because of the playstyle Kusta likes. Because back on the, his old team, Selfless, he, the whole game revolved around him doing good, him carrying the team. And I feel like CLG will be the same way for him. They will set set the atmosphere up so Kusta can succeed. And if he doesn't succeed in the CLG lineup, I don't know where he'll succeed. And I think the trade for JDM and Kusta was a really good trade. Next, we have Gambit. Gambit has been performing good. However, we saw their E-League performance against top tier teams. They didn't do too well. Uh, they lost to, I believe they lost to, yeah, they lost to VP20. They got wrecked. They took a close map against Complexity and also lost the map against Complexity. Arguably like one of the worst tier two NA teams there. And yeah, they did take a map off Vir Virtus Pro that was on Nuke. But not too great results, but Gambit are land mongrels. They will destroy on land. And I believe Gambit, they have a solid 5 roster. Hooch has been constantly improving. I've been seeing, as we saw on all these matches, he won some really good clutch scenarios. His aim has gotten better. He is able to compete with the top level players. And for this match, I have to put my odds at 65-35 because... <laughs> It's still a best of one. CLG still can take this, but Kusa has to be on fire. Tyrek has to be on fire. Hayes has to play to his usual consistency, as well as Cutler. Peter just can stand there and do nothing if he wants. And Gambit... Gambit will perform well, I believe. And I will put my bet on Gambit. I will go medium on them, most likely. I can't show you guys now since my phone is actually out of battery, so I can't log into Steam. I just got home. From vacation so yeah next match Navi versus Flipside this one's pretty basic this is a classic CIS match Navi has played Flipside a lot of times and they have come out favored almost 90% of the time which is a great thing actually they've won a hundred percent of the matches they played against Flipside I would say uh, last time I checked and they did lose a couple maps in best of threes but they've never lost a full best of three to Flipside and the odds are 88-12. I would just skip this because I don't think Flipside have a chance to win. But it is a best of one. And Navi at 88% odds in a best of one is not something I want to take the risk on. Next map. <clears throat> Next match. Next we have Nip versus Optic Gaming. Last time we saw these teams face up. It was at E-League. <clears throat> uh, with Optic doing decent. I believe they took a map off Nip. And the map they took was actually... They actually wrecked Nip, I believe. Let me just check this. Yeah, so they, uh, yeah, they beat Nip 16 3 on Cobble and then they lost on the other two maps. Train was very close. This was Nip while well, they were in form. They were really good at this tournament. And yeah, so Nip, uh, we see Nip. They've been struggling lately. They did lose to G2 16, uh, in a 2-0 manner in ECS. However, this was with G2 uh, doing really well in this tournament, and they, want, they went on to win this tournament. Then we have Nip vers versus Luminosity. They did lose to Luminosity, but it was 16-12. It was pretty close. Immortals versus Nip. This was actually a great upset. Nip lost to Immortals 2-0 in DreamHack. I can't tell what their form is right now. They've been doing decent. They've been doing poor. I can't tell. They're just very inconsistent. While well, Optic have been doing okay also as of late. And at 70-30 odds or around there, I would have to place a bet on Optic. Just because I believe they can up upset Nip. We've seen it before. And I'm sure Optic are reviewing more Nip demos than Nip is reviewing Optic demos just for the fact that Optic are not, I would say, as skilled as Nip. However, we the the wildcard factor here is Mixwall, alright? So the fact about Mixwall is that the reason why Optic didn't get far in E-League is because Mixwall didn't perform well, alright? That's simple as that because the we saw Optic go like reach third place and we see them take a map off nip because naf was going off rush was going off but if you see the 16 14 result uh where is it against optic here if mixwall played well that game they could have they could have won this map probably this map overpass was probably a hopeless case to begin with anyways 
So for this match, we need, if Optic need want to win, we have to see Mixwell go off as well as we also have to see Rush and Nap playing to the level that they were in E League, which was really high. Their aim was on point and their timing was very good. So we have to see that again. And as for Nip, if they want to win, we have to see uh, mm, we have to see Get Right perform better because Get Right. Uh, that Dreamhack tournament was probably one of it, or not the Dreamhack, I think the ECS tournament was one of his worst tournaments there. So we need to see Get Right get back into form if Nip wanna win, and Optic we need to see uh, Mixwell get in, back into form. And I'd like to take my, take my chances on Mixwell just because we've seen what he can do in the past, we've seen him literally, literally carry teams to victory. As he did for uh, G-Bots in that one tournament, I think it was ESL Barcelona. I'm not too sure it was a while back so i'm gonna go with optic on this one i would bet small optic and that's it for this match next match we have liquid versus envious liquid we've recently seen them at the ecs tournament they performed very well above expectations making it to the semi-finals or did they make the semi i think they made it to the quarterfinals maybe yeah i think they made it to the quarterfinals and for a team that just picked up two other players well be it simple was on the team at the major but it's still a major change when you swap out two of your players for two other players so no more adren no more uh j or no more kusta now we have jdm and simple which is our definitely an up upgrade for sure and we, we saw this team just perform really well i'm not sure it's because of the new additions of the teammates or peacemakers coaching but we've really seen something different out of them uh and I feel like they can perform really well this major. Uh, so next match we have, or next team we have Envious. Now Envious, uh, I'm not sure what to say about Envious. Envious is, as I like to call it, a wild card team. Be just because Envious has two consistent players. And that's not a lot of consistent players. And those two consistent players, I would say, are NBK and Happy. Each time I see these two frag pretty decent. And the three wildcard players are definitely happy. I'm not happy. Kenny, Apex, and Devil. Now, the reason why Envy did so good in E League is because of Devil. De Devil just went in. Every time VP or Complexity or Gambit try to take a site, Devil always came up with these triple kills. It was amazing. Because we never saw these kind of things out of Devil. If you put him in the right position, he'll do what needs to be done. That's just how he's utilized. However, his T side play is not great, which is what I have the problem with. And he has consistency issues too. He is a new player. He might get nervous in these LAN environments, which is definitely understandable. He is constantly improving. I think Devil was a decent pick for Envy. But we have to see him perform if they want to win this tournament. Because, like, the thing is, the other his other two teammates, Apex and Kenny, won't always be, won't always be fragging. So who's gonna be in their place to frag? It has to be Devil, because we already know Happy and NBK will be getting the frags. And speaking of that, how how are we like? Th uh, another good reason why they won the E League was because of Kenny. Kenny performed great in the finals against VP. He dropped like 20 kills, more than 20 kills. This is more than we've seen in a while from Kenny. I mean, he's not technically carrying the team as he did with Titan or Very Games, but he's he's doing his job. He's dropping in 20 frags. He's being a solid opper. He's hitting shots again, which is amazing because we haven't seen Kenny hit a form where he actually hit shots for a while. And then we have Apex, who on Titan was known to be so inconsistent. But now we're, we're starting to get a bit of consistency from him. He is able to en entry frag, like... And that's how they get sights. He's able to entry frag. And even with those crazy MAC-10 buys, some, somehow they find, to win, find out how to win those rounds. It's insane. Envy have been so, so much improvement since them winning... Winning uh, Dreamhack Malmo, or was it 
Well, whatever, whatever the no, uh, cl clutch. Since them winning clutch, no Poka. With that bell curve, they went down, and now they're starting to rise back up. And it's really nice to see it from them. But this is definitely what the odds say. This is a 50-50 match. Maybe a little in favor of Envious. Anyone who says this match is in favor of Liquid is an idiot. This is maybe slightly in favor of Envious. The odds right now are very correct, I would say. And I would definitely skip this match. Because <sighs> because games like this, they're 50-50. If you want to toss a coin and bet, just do it. But I'll, I'll be skipping this match. Next match, we have Dendidi versus Spirit. Today we saw DenDD play god awful on the first map against, or on the second, was it the second? Hold on, let me check. So, DenDD did play against Alpha today, which, oh my god, I, they played against Alpha today, a very not good Danish team, and they, uh, they lost first map 16-7 and then managed to wreck them in the other two maps, so I don't know what to say about that. They probably do deserve 21% against Spirit. Just skip this. Is Operation King wins so many better games to bet on tomorrow, especially. Not worth the bet here. Next match we have is VP versus Maus. Now, there have been recent rumors about uh, Chris J being replaced in Maus for Oscar. I'm not sure if those rumors are true. But if they are, there must be some inner turmoil within the team. Uh, VP have been, uh, I don't know what to say about them. They've been just like so on and off. I don't know if they're going to be good, going to be bad. Whenever I bet on them, I think they're going to be, they're just awful. Like, and they were doing so good in the E-League earlier in the tournament. And then the finals, they just played, oh my god, they just played disgustingly. It was awful to watch. And Maus, Maus has actually, I think Maus is probably one of the most underrated teams here. We can see the match history, right? Well, this this doesn't really prove my, prove my point here. They lost 16-9, 16-3 flip side. But that's only in the finals. We see earlier performances. 16-13 Echo Fox, not impressive, but 16-12 Echo Fox. They lost Navi, 16-6. They... Alrighty, sorry for the cut. Uh, I had to do something, but... Uh, yeah, so VP versus Maus, uh, I'm gonna skip this match for now, but the odds go above 60% for VP, I'm gonna bet Maus, short story now, uh, I couldn't really go into detail about this game, but the head-to-heads do say that, uh, alright, this doesn't show all the head-to-heads, because I'm pretty sure they faced recently, I'm, didn't they face recently? I'm not sure, but yeah, so, Above 60% VP, I go Maus. If not, I'm just going to skip. Next match, SK versus G2. We saw uh, these two teams face in ECS in the finals. And G2 did come out on top. SK is actually the old Luminosity team, which consists of the Brazilians, aka Fallen, Fur, uh, FNX, whatever, those guys. And <clears throat> G2 have hit a recent spurt of, I would say, greatness. <laughs> Because we've seen, instead of two gamers, it's actually five gamers. We've seen uh, Shocks. I mean, Shocks is the main component of the team. If Shocks performs, the team basically wins. Uh, Scream as well. Scream was the MVP of this tournament. We saw him go nuts that game. And this is not to disregard RPK. RPK is just a rock. See, he doesn't get much spotlight, but... He's just nuts in his own way, and he holds sights down so well. That's why he's known as RPK Tank. Smith, as usual, uh, I don't see much impact from him, but sometimes in those Dust2 games, which I'm not sure if Dust2 will be played out. I don't think Dust2 will be played out. I think Luminosity will veto it. And so the map will probably be like Train or something. And they both are good, pretty decent Train teams. Uh, and the really important thing to notice is that for G2 to win that tournament, everyone was performing well, and B Body, which was a big question mark going to the tournament, did end up uh, going a positive rating in most of the maps, which was a very big surprise for him. So we'll, we'll see a really close game between these two, be and Luminosity, I wouldn't say they're struggling, it's just G2 doing well lately, and Luminosity should definitely be favored here. These odds are pretty correct right now and i would just skip this game watch it for fun because we don't know if g2 is going to play to their current form that we did see in ecs 
they perform really well there, but can they perform again? We saw them prefer, perform good in other tournaments, but one day they could be gods, one day they're garbage. We can't tell. We have to watch this first game and we have to see, we'll see how well they'll be doing this tournament. If they're good this game, then we might see them good the next, rest of the games and that gives us information to bet, but for now, uh, just skip this. Next match we have Fnatic versus FaZe. Last time these guys faced off, it was a pretty good match, actually. Uh, let me check. I believe Fnatic came out on top in a best of three. I'm not sure. Let me just look at this FaZe clan. Uh, yeah, Fnatic did come out on top. Oh, they lost. To Fnatic beat them 2 off. But this is a best of one again. Fnatic definitely do not deserve 77-23 odds in this game, considering their current form. I... Their, their current form is in question. We don't know how good they are right now because an injured Olaf Meister just came back and they did crush FaZe in E-League, but we don't know. FaZe are so are probably going to anti-strat them. We don't know. That's why the major is so difficult to predict because all teams always say, yes, we will save our strats for the major. I don't know what that means. Does that mean they have some secret plan planned out? So I would put this max max odds for Fnatic at 70%, my personal odds. This is probably a 65-35 match here. And I think FaZe can take it. They even 16-8 Fnatic on Mirage. One of Fnatic's, arguably one of Fnatic's best maps. And FaZe have been doing really good lately. Uh, actually, we saw Fnatic recently play too. In the, in the ECS, they lost to G2 2-0. They even almost lost to TSM in that tournament and cloud nine so we don't know how good they are and for there for that reason i would put a small bet on phase just because we don't know the current status of Fnatic, they should be better than phase but we don't know if they're gonna beat them so that's the issue uh last match of the day i'm not gonna analyze trick versus magistra i don't know what magistra is but the last match of the game is penta versus agg these odds are definitely gonna be changing uh, I actually favor AGG in this match, to be honest. If the odds for AGG stay below 40%, I'll put a medium bet on AGG just because I'm really confident in them against Penta. And that's it for today, guys. Um, sorry if the analysis was kind of long today and not as detailed as usual because I didn't do too much research regarding them because it is the 4th of July. I just came home from a long vacation and I didn't want to invest too much time into these predictions because I actually do have to watch fireworks. I promise you guys tomorrow's predictions will be better and I wish you guys a good night and good luck betting. Stay safe. It is the 4th of July. Things will get dangerous. Uh, thank you.